today i am going to speak about a very interesting design challenge which we scientists face in the field of uh, battle tank design okay battle tank is technically called as an armored fighting vehicle i'll be using these terms alternatively afv abbreviated okay so the two important design parameters the armor and ammunition of a tank are always a rivalry okay that's what we are going to see in this presentation right meaning one of these uh, technologies if there is a development then the opponent the opponent team of scientists have to recuperate and come with a new innovation to face and tackle that uh, counterpart okay so this keeps on uh, you know consistent pressure on the scientists to develop break the barrier again develop this cycle continues the cycle had been there ever since the inception of tank and it will be there until a tank is there in a war field okay so we'll move on to the further details yeah okay so this is a typical uh, lateral section of a tank and a disclaimer none of my uh, visuals are from uh, any of our government projects okay it's all from open source and so okay this is to give an idea what is the tank construction so as you can see predominantly there is a high velocity gun okay and there are related paraphernalia and there is an armor the red hatch what you see here it's all an armor because tank needs to be protected okay and third is the automotive system and you have lot of electronics software and all that packed into a modern uh, battle tank okay so yeah now we'll uh, move on to the next okay so against what do we want to protect the tank if you see that there is a gamut of threats okay this is what we call as a threat spectrum and a tank is always designed to defeat or fight against another tank that is a fundamental principle okay but we cannot mitigate you cannot you know avoid mitigating other threats like what you see here up to the latest uh, unmanned drones as you see in the news every day when the war breaks out okay so up to that we have lot of threats and we have lot of systems in the tank to protect against all these threats but still having said that the fundamental protection is only from the armor what i showed in the previous slide okay so how this armor evolved and what was the threat it faced how the ammunition also evolved parallelly that's what we are going to see yeah next okay this was the advent of ammunition okay the initial tanks were protected only against this ammunition okay this is nothing but a high explosive okay it can be an rdx it can be tnt so on and so forth so this explosive as you see here in the cut section is packed in a shell and this shell is fired with a projectile okay now this when it hits the tank it cannot penetrate a tank okay but it can cause a surface damage crew casualties okay now yeah next now earlier tanks like what you see here they were mammoths okay they were they started you know building material to protect against the high explosive ammunition what we saw in the previous slide and initially it was a mild steel okay as any engineer would fire first think about mild steel then we went on to have a more homogeneous steel for a better strength then yeah that was not sufficient then we went on to roll homogeneous armor it is a high tensile steel okay so here also we kept on adding the ammunition and you cannot add because it will become a mobile bunker a tank is a war machine it has to penetrate through the enemy territory it has to conquer the territory okay so that may not be possible if it is heavy so weight is a of paramount importance yeah then we started no previous 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 stream okay so then we started inventing on things like shaping the armor when what happens when you shape an armor the projected area increases so by the either when you penetrate or when you have a blast you have a greater projected area okay so that the cosine effect okay so 45 if you have 45 mm then by cos 60 you get a 90 mm as simple as that right then there was a concept like the russian school of thought we had cast armors which was easy to manufacture in large numbers but of course as engineers would understand that this cast armor will come with the inbuilt inherent defects okay right now the fight started okay now ammunition developers were pitted against that armor what we saw so now we had to penetrate the armor so for that we need a kinetic energy we are not talking about a low energy we are talking about energy of the order of 10 megajoules okay 
So this kind of kinetic energy penetrator was designed to defeat like 500-600 mm of armor packed in the tank. Okay? And it's also ballistically shaped to first of all reach the target and also to penetrate the target. Right? Next. Okay. Now this is what I was talking about. Now, when we think about protecting against an ammunition, you keep increasing the armor, there is a limit. So then, this is the iron triangle as, as we call it. This is like a bible for a tank designer. Okay? See, you need to strike a balance between these three parameters, which are the fundamental parameters of a tank. It needs to be mobile, it has to have a very great firepower to defeat the enemy, it needs to protect itself from enemy attack. Okay? But when you increase the firepower, have a bigger gun, your mobility goes for a six. Or if you increase the protection, again your mobility goes for a six. Mobility is another way of protecting the tank. An, an agile tank is a difficult target for the enemy to defeat it. Yeah. So then, armor scientists started evolving what is known as a composite armor. Okay. It is a multi-layered and we'll see the construction, how it's going to work. Yeah. Next. Okay. This is how it looks. Like you see, the outer face has to be very hard. It has to resist the penetration and have a softer inner side like you have rubber, so many materials. Okay to be resilient, to absorb the shock of the ammunition. Okay? And also, the ammunition, even if it doesn't penetrate, it can have a secondary effect of having a spall. That is also devastating, because we are talking about very high energies. Okay? So that is also prevented using special techniques. Okay. Now ammunition, people again started, the battle got intensive, they again evolved. Okay? The same explosive, what was earlier used, was now used with the backing of a scientist's work, the scientist called Munro, he invented an effect called the shape charge effect, okay, or Munro's effect. Now, if you see, there is a cone. Unfortunately, you don't have a pointer which is so intense, it's all right. So the cone, what you see, that red section, that is designed with a very high, you know, parameters of geometry. And uh, the principle is, if you have a cone of a specific geometry and detonate it appropriately with the wave shaper and all that, then the cone collapses and a high velocity jet is produced. We are talking about velocities of the order of 10 kilometers per second. Imagine. So that kind of jet can penetrate the armor like a butter. Okay? And we are talking about 300 gigapascals of impact impulse. Okay? Right. Now, we will see an you know, uh, video on this. Next. Yeah, please. please. Okay. So this is how the cone is constructed. And uh, audio is not coming for the video? No problem, no problem. So you could see the jet is uh, just penetrating the armor like butter. Okay? So this ammunition is called as high explosive anti-tank ammunition. Next. Okay. Now the armor scientists have to recuperate, like I said in the beginning. So now what to do? Now they started using the explosive itself which is attacking them to also defeat the ammunition, right? So this is what is called as the explosive reactive armor. So it's nothing but, you know, a, a package, an armor package, inside which explosive core is there, like any of the explosive you can use, RDX, TNT, so on and so forth. And there are bonding layers for specific absorption purpose, mounted in a very peculiar way. This is designed very, very carefully. I have designed an ERA, so the design of ERA itself is a technology. Next. So this is a uh, visual how it works. This is the ammunition what we saw earlier. See what happens? The ammunition can't even touch the armor. Okay? This explosive reactive armor has just neutralized the ammunition. It has gone for, it's gone in the wind. Right? It just collapses. Using the same explosive what is there to explode, they are deviating and neutralizing the ammunition. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Again, the battle got intense. The ammunition people started working again, going back to the kinetic energy. Now what to do? Increase the kinetic energy, increase the accuracy, target specific areas where the tank is weak. Tank cannot be a bunker, as I am repeatedly saying. You cannot protect everywhere. So target accurately the area where it is very weak and penetrate it with the right kind of terminal ballistics. Both external ballistics and terminal ballistics are very, very important for an ammunition. Okay? So a long rod penetrator with the spin stabilized is devastating. We are talking about velocities 
5 Mach hypersonic velocities and hydrodynamic behavior will be observed. That is, the, both the penetrator and the armor will behave like a fluid. So, it will just penetrate the armor. Yes, next. Yeah, that is the visual. See, this is what happens. Even if you have an ERA, what, see what happens to the ERA? It destroys part of the ammunition, but still it makes a penetration. And even if a chunk enters at 5 Mach hypersonic velocity, the tank is gone. Okay? Yeah. You can play this visual. Okay, this is how it's constructed. No, it's also, you know, it's a very sophisticated design. Yeah. You can see that goes like a rocket and it jettisons the sabo, what we call it. The sabo is only to give a greater pump to the projectile. Yeah. Now, this is a summary of, uh, you know, various types of derivatives. You have an incendiary where you can have a smoke screen. You have a combination of both the fin stabilized as well as the heat warhead and also you have, okay, this is just what we saw and this is like squash head and uh, high explosive plastic. It will go and stick against the armor, create a blast effect which will also have a chunk of material thrown from the inside of the tank. Okay, so these are, you know, derivatives. Okay. Now came our famous friend missile. Like you have, you know, a battery of missiles. So one missile now started being designed for defeating tank arm, okay? That's the reason it's called as anti-tank guided missile, okay? Because guided missile is lethal, like a Brahmastra. Once you fire it, it's very difficult to counter it. So, let's see how it works. Now, missile gives several advantages. First of all, it's very, very precise because it's guided. You can make it seek, a, you know, like a thermal signature or radio signature of that particular target what you want to attack and you can specifically hit the specific area where you want to hit. If you want to hit the engine of the tank, there is a heat signature. Make the missile seek to that, okay? And similarly, you can attack the weak spots like the top. You cannot have a big armor in the top. So, obviously, a lofted trajectory can penetrate very easily, okay? And you can have a lot of third-gen missiles are coming nowadays where it is just fire and forget. You can fire the missile. It has its own onboard computer which can have its own seeking methodology and hit the target. And very high hit probability as you see here. Next. Okay. Now, this is the advantage, what I was telling you. You can have a longer range because, see, for a kinetic energy ammunition, what you see in the first row, you need to pack the entire energy in the gun itself. But the missile has a traveling charge. It has got a motor, rocket motor. So, it can propel up to 6 kilometers. Why that limit? Because Earth's curvature also comes into play. So, that's the reason we have 6 kilometers. Okay. So, obviously, enhanced range. And all these guidance methods are there. There are semi-active command line of sight, IAR, imaging infrared, millimetric wave radar. All these are guidance methods having its own advantages. Next. Right. So, these are visuals. Like you can see so many tanks and firing and you can have the field of regard, have the enemy target within that cone. Cone is also mobile, of course. Okay. Yeah. Next. Beauty is in the previous one, all are fired from tank gun itself, which fires a normal ammunition, is designed to make firing a missile also. That is the advantage. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the hot topic now. You can see every day in the news, this kind of, you know, domes and all that, which can, you know, uh, neutralize the incoming uh, drones or uh, missiles and all that. That suit is also designed for battle tank. That's what is called as an active protection system. And uh, I don't want to go into any specific war, but you can observe in everyday news that an iron dome or something which can defeat the incoming missiles and all that, similar suit is designed in the tank also. And we have many methods. We can, you, you know, neutralize the missile, you can cut the command link, you can confuse the missile, jam it, or you can physically counter it also. So, how it works? Next. Okay. So, this is what I was saying. A soft kill, by soft kill we mean we are jamming the command link of the missile, thereby losing its target. Okay? Second, you can have a countering projectile, sensing the missile speed and all that. You can counter it with a cluster of projectiles, neutralizing the incoming threats. This is evolving. This is a very, very active, uh, you know, uh, project now and it's evolving day by day and, uh, you know, the fight has now become very intense. Okay. Now, not only that, another complexity is, okay, you design an armor. But uh, 
it's not just adding material, you know, because you, it's a vehicle, ultimately it's a vehicle. So you cannot just add armor anywhere you like, okay? And it, it is added in a, you know, very, very technical way and very specific way, protecting in a particular angle of threat and all that. Lot of study and analysis are going into it. And you can see how the welding is complicated. All these joints intricate because it, ha it has to house a lot of equipment. There are about, you know, 90, 95 sophisticated equipments in the tank to make it survive in the enemy territory. And also you can see the operating conditions. Imagine the kind of load will come to the structure like what you see here. So that makes the, even the fabricating process very complicated. Next. Okay. So we go for, you know, techniques like this where we have, you can play that video, where we use manipulators for creating a very precise and consistent uh, welding and also with a very high inspection accuracy and all that. Yeah. Okay. Now, what's going to be the future? Yes. Lot of work is going on, like armor which is hit and still can self-heat. Research is going on. Functionally graded material. You can design the section of the armor. Uh, if I'm exceeding my time limit, please indicate. Okay. I've exceeded, is it? Okay, I'll close down. So it is evolving and ammunition also is evolving, like what I was saying, longer range, longer reach, guided. Drones are coming up in a big way. You can see directed energy. This is a UK's Dragonfire laser where you can have, you know, intense uh, protection as well as attack. Yeah. Next. So, okay, with that I conclude and uh, before closing, just one second, I'll, uh, I just want to uh, just send a message that, see, uh, I request all of you uh, starting from uh, students, uh, professors, and uh, industrial experts to join you know, this kind of national mission, support us. You are already doing, but to do participate more and you know take up uh, projects. Students can join DRDO in different forms. You can join as a research fellow, join as a scientist. Okay, and uh, please do participate for this noble cause for the nation. Thanks for the opportunity. Jai Hind.